This part is about uh, the micro perspective on the financial system. And what do I mean with micro perspective? It's about financial institutions and how fin financial institutions affect society. How it affects us as people, how it affects society at large. The micro perspective. Now, what has, uh, what has happened in the financial system? In the financial system has happened in the last 20, 25 years that financial institutions, in part because of information technology, are able to become hyperactive. They very, can very quickly invest, put money in one place, and then put money in the other place. And they cannot just do that. They can basically give loans to, for example, future homeowners. And in the meantime, sell these loans to other investors in the financial market. So they are no longer on the books of the bank. They have been sold in the financial market. And after banks have sold these loans, they can use their revenues to make new loans. So you see that the activity of banks have become, yeah, I would say much more hyperactive. They can change the balance sheet. They can change their activities very, very quickly. So this level of hyperactivity has one nasty consequence. And a nasty consequence is that it makes behavior of institutions and also of society at large much more short-term oriented. And the, the word for that is myopic, much more short-term oriented. What do you mean? I mean that in good periods, euphoric periods, and many very often euphoric periods, institutions see gold, not literally gold, but they are very positive about developments that they see, they are willing to give loans to everything that moves. While in bad times, they become overly risk averse, they want their money back, they are not willing to give any loans. So what do you see that financial institutions do? Financial institutions create extra big booms in good times and create extra big problems in bad times. So this hyperactivity has enormous consequences for society. And not just that, you see also that financial institutions became, and look particularly uh, before the financial crisis, became very good at selling financial products to every citizen of this country. We have had seven and a half million savings policies that were the Hooker policy, it's also called in Dutch, savings policies that were sold by life insurance companies to Dutch citizens, seven and a half million. And these policies were bad policies. They had very high implicit costs, meaning the insurance company would invest your money, you would give them one euro, and they would only invest 70 cents or 65 cents of this one euro. The rest was profit for the insurance industry. So these have been very bad products, but they could be sold because Dutch citizens became very dependent of financial institutions, and financial institutions became very good at selling products. Whether these products were saving products, like the Wooker policy, or whether these were loans, like all these mortgages that were uh, sold, um, credit granted to Dutch citizens. So this dependence of society in the financial sector is not necessarily good. You see that Dutch citizens, particularly now, for example, you see one million people that have mortgages outstanding, which are larger than the value of their home. And what does it mean? It means that these people will have a very difficult time, very difficult time for a long period. They will not be able to consume a lot. They have to repay this enormous debt. That's not good for society. So the question is, and that's the key issue, how can we solve this issue? And there are two solutions. One solution is that we try to control financial institutions, that this hyperactivity of financial institutions is being controlled. That can, for example, be by asking financial institutions or for forcing them to have more capital, to have more risk-bearing capacity. So they cannot just give loans as, as, as much as they would like. They need to keep reserves behind that they, can, uh, that they can easier absorb losses, that when bad times come, they are not immediately in trouble, and therefore that also in bad times, they can play in fruit for all. So we force banks to behave more prudently. That's one direction. And there have been many measures in that direction. The second direction, however, may not be less important. And that is how can we make society more resilient and less dependent on the financial sector? And here you see that governments are a lot to blame. Governments have created policies that made us all very dependent on the financial sector. Let me give you one example, the most important example. If 
you basically grant every Dutch citizen the possibility to deduct interest payments on mortgages from their taxes. So they get a tax subsidy and tax benefit if they have interest payments. And you only have interest payments when you have a mortgage. So you are forced to have to take loans because if you take loans, you get deductibility of the interest payment and you have to pay less taxes. So what do we do as society and what have we done as society? We have subsidized people in making debts by taking loans. There's nothing good about that. There's hardly anybody who's willing to defend it. Because buying houses with large loans is not necessarily good. It can help you afford a house, but once you subsidize this, it means that everybody is going to buy houses which are too big, too expensive. And if everybody wants to buy houses, by the way, houses become more expensive. And by becoming more expensive, it means that despite the subsidy, it's still going to be expensive. So society has been made very dependent on these loans by having subsidized making these loans. And this is just one example. So we really have to look at society, how to make society more resilient with respect to the financial sector, and how to reduce the dependence of society on the financial sector. And that would be complementary to measures that try to control the behavior of financial institutions themselves.